Hello everyone, in this lecture I am going to deal very important drug that is being used in labor process is the oxytocin. So we know it is very important eutotonic that maintain the tonicity of the uterus during labor process. So uh, here in this lecture we will discuss some important point regarding this drug. So we know that the oxytocin also synthesize naturally and it is from the hypothalamus, from the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei and from there it transported through the neuronal axons and uh, it reaches up to the posterior pituitary where it stored or it released. So it is also being synthesized naturally as well and naturally it is a non-apeptide that is formed by 9 amino acid sequence. So this is very important drug we can artificially infuse in mother as well because it help in the tonicity of the uterus there uh, it contracts and it help in labor process. So next we will discuss what is the action of this drug. So mainly this oxytocin help in uterine contraction because there are some receptor on the uterus where this oxytocin get bind and there it help in uterine contraction especially in the fundal part and make the lower part the cervical region more relaxed so thereby the product of conception delivers out so it help in uterine contraction and uh, it also synthesizes prostaglandin from the amnion and the decidua amnion the fetal membrane and the decidua that is the endometrium of uterus so it help in synthesizing the prostaglandin as well because this will also help in uh, uterine contractility and the cervical ripening thereby the labor uh, progresses and the fetus delivers out so the main function of oxytocin is the contraction of the uterus so how this contraction begin so throughout labor the oxytocin receptors uh, increases under the effect of some hormone but just near term the receptors are more in number they multiplies very rapidly so at the time of labor the myometrial lining where the smooth muscles are there in that the, the cells that is the myofibrils they have uh, some receptor on their plasma membrane so these receptors are G coupled protein receptors so these receptors accept the oxytocin whenever uh, we infuse this oxytocin so these receptors on the plasma membrane receive the oxytocin and they get bind with that oxytocin thereby they activate the another molecule that is phospholipase C and there it will release inositol triphosphate so this molecule bind with the receptor that is present on the sarcoplasmic reticulum in the cytoplasma and there the stored calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum get released in the cytoplasm so here not only the stored calcium is released in the cytoplasma rather that is the voltage gated channel open and they allow the influx of calcium from extra to intracellular so thereby the amount of calcium the concentration of calcium get increased so this increase in calcium concentration bind with the another molecule that is calmodulin and they created complex and thereby the another enzyme get activated that is myosin light chain kinase enzyme and this get phosphorylated uh, into the myosin light chain and this phosphorylated myosin light chain uh, activates the actin filament so once the actin filament get activates they help in uterine contraction so thereby the labor progresses and the fetus or the product of conception delivers out. So this is how the oxytocin works. So next we will discuss what are the indication in which all condition we can administer this drug. So uh, if we want to artificially start the labor process that is an induction of labor we can administer. So suppose if the pregnancy reaches near term and spontaneously the labor process is not started yet then we can start the artificial mean by using this oxytocin drug and initiate the labor process so in induction we can use 
In augmentation of labor, where the contraction, uterine contraction are not that much frequent, regular or intense. So to maintain its regularity, we can infuse or administer this drug. In uterine inertia as well, we can infuse this drug. And if you want to manage the third stage of labor actively, where we want the placenta to be delivered out within 5 to 10 minutes, then also we can administer this oxytocin drug to reduce the uh, amount of bleeding and uh, actively managing the third stage where we want to deliver the placenta or uh, in postpartum hemorrhage as well where the cause of PPH is the atonicity where the uterine tone is not that much good to control the bleeding in such condition also we can administer and suppose if you want to evacuate the uterus in vesicular mold where some grape like vesicles are being formed. So if you want to evacuate the uterus, we want to take out all this con content from the uterus, then also we can administer this oxytocin drug. And if we want to artificially induce the abortion process legally, uh, then also we can use this drug along with some prostaglandin analog PGE1, E2. So in induction of labor as well, we can uh, administer this drug. Now next we will deal the contraindication in which all condition we cannot administer this drug. So if the woman is grand multiparous where she had delivered multiple times more than five times then also we can't infuse because uh, the uterine tonicity is not that much good in such mother as in primary gravid mother. So we can't infuse in such mother if the labor is obstructed uh, lies not favorable, transverse or oblique is there, mild presentations are there. In such condition also we can't administer because we can't uh, take the benefit of the fetal excess pressure because the lie is disturbed. So in such condition also we can't administer oxytocin. And if the mother had the history of uh, heart diseases, in this also we can't administer because uh, this drug has some antidiuretic property where uh, the water can be retained more uh, by continuous infusion. So in heart disorder mothers if we infuse this drug then it can lead into the transient hypotension, the tachycardia would be there and hyponatremia would be there. So we can't infuse in such mothers. So mother with the heart disorder can't uh, be given this drug. And uh, if the fetal heart rate is not reassuring, the fetal heart rate is disturbed uh, because of the overuse of over infusion of this drug, then also we can't continue this drug because uh, sometimes what happened uh, with the over stimulation of the uterus, the placental flow would be disturbed toward the fetus and the fetus uh, won't be able to take out all the nutrients through less amount of blood flow. So if the fetal heart rate is also not reassuring, then also we can't administer this drug. So these are certain contraindications in which all mother we can't infuse this drug. Now next we'll discuss uh, the routes of administration and different dosages of oxytocin. So this drug is uh, also available in synthetic form uh, in market that is in form of pitocin and syntocinone that can be available in vial and ampule and in in an ampule 1 ml contains 10 international unit and in a vial 10 ml vial is also available where the it can contain 100 international unit so this drug cannot be administered orally because previously also i mentioned that uh, it is composed of amino acids and peptide bonds so this protein can easily be digested by the gastric secretion if the mother takes orally. So that the mother can't be given this drug orally. And uh, we can administer this by intramuscular or uh, IV infusion uh, manner because IV bolus also we can't administer uh, as it has some antidiuretic property. So because of that, if we give bolus then it can cause hypotension because of this effect uh, it causes vasodilation, transient vasodilation, more retention of water, hypotension so thereby 
this drug cannot be given IV bolus. So this we have to administer through infusion and for that we can use some diluent. Uh, the solution which have some electrolyte property like isotonic solution we can use. So we can uh, mix this drug with solution like uh, RL, NS but we cannot uh, mix that drug with the de pure dextrose solution because again if we infuse in D5 then the dextrose will be utilized by the body and the pure water will be free water will be available that will again cause water intoxication. So uh, the isotonic solutions that is RL and uh, NS we can use. So how we can prepare this solution and uh, at what flow rate we can infuse to the mother. So we know that one international unit contains 1000 milli international units. So once we take one international unit of oxytocin, we can mix it into the 500 ml RL and thereby it will uh, contain 1000 milli international unit. So by a simple calculation in one ml, it will contain two milli international unit. And if you want to administer through infusion set, then in that one ml is equal to 15 drops. So suppose if we are administering with a low dose regime, where we are administering 1 ml to the mother. So 1 ml contains 2 milli international unit and that is equal to 15 drops. This is the simple calculation. So through this low dose infusion, we can administer to the mother and we can check the contractions regularly and in every 20 to 30 minute, we can escalate the dose around 1 to 2 milli international unit and suppose if we want to escalate the dose and we want to administer 4 milli international unit then we can uh, increase the drop rate that is uh, up to 30 drops we can infuse in each minute that is equal to 4 milli international unit per minute and if we want to escalate more and we, we want to infuse at 60 drop per minute then this would be equal to 8 milli international unit per minute. It means we are infusing around 4 ml. So thereby we can calculate and set the infusion per drop minute and infuse to the mother. So it is said that if we are uh, taking 500 ml RL and we are taking 2 unit of oxytocin that makes this 500 ml uh, into 2000 milli international unit then we can infuse the mother at 60 drop per minute that is equal to 16 milli international unit per minute. So that much amount of infusion is sufficient in uh, most of women uh, to accelerate the uterine contraction and to establish the goal that is to achieve at least 3 contraction in every 10 minutes and the contraction should be last for around 40 to 45 seconds. So this is how we can calculate. And the half-life of this oxytocin drug is around 3 to 4 minutes. It means if we stop the infusion, the efficacy, the effect of that drug will be immediately reduced to half within 3 to 4 minutes. Because the value of that oxytocin remains just half. So if you want to achieve that goal, that is the contraction uh, should be at least 3 in 10. Then to achieve that goal, we need to continuously infuse. Uh, the drug okay and uh, for its effective result it should be refrigerated in 2 to 8 degrees celsius so refrigeration is must uh, for its better work now next we'll discuss what are the side effect of this oxytocin so if we infuse this drug in high amount then it can cause hyperstimulation of uterus it means there may be overactivity of the uterus the contraction which should be remain for about 40 to 45 seconds that can last for around 60 seconds so it means that the intensity get increased okay with this overuse of oxytocin or even there may be a chance of tachycystole where we need actually normal contraction that is free contraction in 10 minutes but the frequency also increases there is the 5 to 6 contraction uh, in every 10 minutes so with its continuous infusion or over infusion, it may lead into the overactivity of the uterus, hyperstimulation of uterus or maybe tachycystole. And if we administer accidentally in multi-parous mother, 
ग्रांड मल्टी पैरस मदर और इन द मदर हु हैव माल प्रेजेंटेशन और द ऑब्स्ट्रक्टेड लेबर देन इट कैन इवन कॉज यूट्राइन रप्चर और इफ वी आर इन्फ्यूजिंग फॉर अ प्रोलॉन्ग टाइम देन ऑल्सो इट कैन कॉज यूट्राइन रप्चर द वॉल गेट रप्चर the lining can be disturbed and even it can cause water intoxication as i said previously also that uh, it has anti diuretic property so uh, it can cause uh, water retention thereby the hypotension would be there hyponatremia could be seen and the mother may have a coma conversion with this effect so because of its anti diuretic property water intoxication means water retention would be there by its overuse or if you are using for a prolonged time that then it can compromise the fetus as well so fetal distress could be seen or it can be so severe that even fetal death can be happen so over stimulation of uterus can contract very vigorously and obstruct the flow toward the fetus and that may lead into the distress in the fetus so with this uh, drug overuse of this drug prolonged uh, infusion or in some contraindicated condition or accidentally if we give in iv bolus form then it may cause sudden side effect in mother as well as fetus so what all nursing intervention we can do when we are administering this oxytocin so whenever we infuse this oxytocin we need to properly check uh, that is how much units are dissolved in uh, with solution and at what flow rate or at what drop rate it is infusing since last how much from how much timing it is uh, infusing secondly what is the progress of labor because we are infusing this oxytocin to achieve the uterine contraction and if we are not establishing the three contraction in every 10 minute then we are not achieving uh, our goal so we need to check continuously that uh, how much labor is progressed uh, that is uh, how much contractions are there in every 10 minutes and at what intensity these are appearing that is uh, they should be in moderate or uh, severe or our mild form and uh, any descent of head is seen or not a cervical dilatation is there or not so simultaneously we can check with the progression of labor and whenever the oxytocin is infused then fetal heart rate must be checked in every 15 minute because again hyperstimulation and tachycystole uh, of uterus may lead into the Uh, fetal distress so fetal heart rate monitoring also give us a better idea about the progression as well as the status of the fetus so in this lecture we have discussed with a very important deuterotonic that is oxytocin and it is available in synthetic form pitocin and syntocinone and in this we have seen what is its action what are the indication contraindication what are the root and dosages of this drug side effects and the nursing interventions thank you